Deep in our world of modern civilization runs a disease that is threatening to become the number one killer in any economy. It runs in families though there are no simple patterns of inheritance. Obesity and other environmental factors of today's modern day living have been known to be causes for the disease as well. And once you acquire the disease, it will be with you for life. But how many of us know anything about this mysterious killer disease within us? This documentary program hopes to explore with you the various characteristics of this killer disease. How to avoid it, or if you've already acquired it, how to control it and live a normal life. So what is this killer disease diabetes and how does it occur? To understand this, let's look at what happens in a normal person. In a normal person, the food that is eaten is digested in the stomach and absorbed into the blood normally. The pancreas produces enough insulin and the insulin helps to move the sugar from the blood vessel into the body cells where the sugar is changed into energy and used. There is enough insulin, the sugar is properly used and the blood sugar remains normal. Now let's look at what happens in diabetes. In diabetes, the food is digested and absorbed normally. But the problem happens in the pancreas where the amount of insulin produced is not enough or it does not work properly. So the amount of sugar in the blood builds up, spills into the urine and is wasted. So in diabetes, there is little insulin, sugar is not properly used, builds up in the blood and is wasted in the urine. There are two common types of diabetes which differ in their course, onset and treatment. Insulin-dependent or type 1 diabetes mainly occur in children or young adults who may be normal or underweight. The pancreas produces very little or no insulin. The symptoms usually occur over a short period of time. They may develop diabetes coma easily. People with type 1 diabetes need insulin injections to stay alive. Non-insulin dependent or type 2 diabetes affects many adults over the age of 40 years and more common in people who are overweight or very fat. The pancreas may produce slightly less insulin or the insulin produced does not work properly. Most of the people with type 2 diabetes can control blood sugar through diet, exercise and tablets. Many adults with diabetes do not experience the symptoms, which means that it often goes unrecognized until too late. And here lies the killer sting in this disease. In any case, a person suffering from diabetes may lose consciousness if the level of sugar or glucose in the blood is too high. This condition is known as diabetic coma. Diabetes is a major public health concern in Fiji and developing island nations of the South Pacific region. Many of these people with diabetes need medication to control their diabetes. Thus, to help control blood sugar levels and prevent more people from developing complications, everyone needs to know about it. Effectively controlling diabetes means keeping blood sugar levels normal. Now let's look at some of the common symptoms of diabetes. Passing a lot of urine, 
feeling thirsty all the time, having blurred vision, losing weight, tiredness, skin infections which take long to heal. We must remember that many people with type 2 diabetes do not have any symptoms even though their blood sugar levels are above normal. The risk of diabetes can be inherited. In fact, if your parents or close relatives have diabetes, then you have a greater risk of developing the disease. And more importantly, the risk we acquire from our daily lifestyles. Common lifestyle factors which increase the risk of type 2 diabetes are being fat and overweight, not exercise regularly, improper diet or eating too much foods, physical stress such as broken bones or serious infection, mental stress like worries and work pressures, and taking too much alcohol, all of which amounts to the kind of lifestyles we now lead. Now that we've examined the high risk factors and symptoms of the disease, the question naturally is how can we control this disease? As mentioned earlier, once you've acquired the disease, it will be with you for life. There is definitely no cure for the disease, but one can control it if managed properly. First and foremost is your diet. You need to have a healthy diet every day. Exercise regularly in order to keep your body functions at peak levels at all times. Take medication as advised by your doctor. Monitoring control such as urine testing, blood sugar testing, regular checks with your doctor. Control body weight. Try to learn more about the disease. Now let's look at how best to control and monitor this disease once you acquire it. What is most important is that the family of the person suffering from diabetes should be supportive at all times. Diet is very important to keep your diabetes under control. People with diabetes need to know which foods they should avoid. All foods that we eat are divided into five groups. Carbohydrates or energy-giving foods include starchy and sugary food, fruits and milk. Proteins or bodybuilding foods, fats or energy foods, vitamin and minerals, and dietary fiber or roughage. The following simple guidelines will help people with diabetes keep good control of their diet but still enjoy a good meal. Take starchy foods in right amounts as all starchy foods are changed into sugar in the blood. Take fruits and milk in right amounts. Avoid sugar and sugary foods. Take protein foods in moderate amounts. Remember, some protein foods also contain starch or fat. Protein with starchy foods are blue peas and others. Protein with fat are mutton meat, skin of poultry and others. Eat less fat and use vegetable fats in small amounts in your cooking. Remember, animal fats are more harmful to blood vessels than vegetable fats. Coconut cream or lolo, although obtained from plants, acts more like animal fats, so avoid regular use of coconut cream. These foods contain a lot of animal fats, sausage rolls, bacon, meat pies, croissant, cheesecakes, and potato chips. Avoid these at all costs. Remember, if you have diabetes, you are advised to avoid alcohol. Alcohol is a drug and generally harmful to health. Alcohol drinks provide a lot of energy and therefore can lead to overweight. However, if you find it difficult to avoid alcohol, discuss it with your doctor, dietitian, or nurse. The local brew known as Yangona, on the other hand, is quite safe to drink. Thus, people with diabetes can drink Yangona, but not large amount 
and most importantly, do not miss regular meals and medication. Remember, take these foods in moderate amounts. Supplement this with an active lifestyle. If you are overweight, try to reduce weight now. Overweight people need more insulin to control their blood sugar levels. And like anything that works over time, it eventually gives up and diabetes occurs. Uncontrolled diabetes leads to complications like heart attacks, strokes, amputations, and even early death. There are some foods which contain very little or no sugar, starch, or fat. These are known as free foods and can be taken in large amounts. Free foods include green vegetables, which are highly recommended, as they contain high fiber and roughage. High fiber foods include wholemeal bread, roti, brown rice, dalo, yam, fruits and vegetables. Remember, these foods are useful in controlling diabetes. No doubt, exercise is good for everyone. However, it is especially good for people with diabetes. Exercise helps lower blood sugar levels and blood pressure, as well as stimulate metabolic rates. It helps you with your control management of diabetes and can reduce the risk of heart diseases. It helps you lose weight, improve flexibility and muscle tone, as well as improve fitness and stamina. It is always advisable to pick an exercise you are comfortable with. Walking is probably the best form of exercise. Gardening is also a preferable exercise as well. And if you plant a lot of free foods in your garden for your diet, then it is especially fruitful. Never exercise on an empty stomach. An important thing to remember is to check your feet both before and after exercises. And of course, be sure to wear comfortable and well-fitting shoes. Medication for diabetic sufferers include tablets or insulin injections. Diabetes tablets assist insulin in the control of the disease. In most, but not all people with type 2 diabetes, tablets can help. In people with type 1 diabetes, tablets cannot help. This is because the pancreas cannot always produce the amount of insulin needed to stay alive. Remember, tablets and injections do not replace your diet. Tablets for type 2 diabetes are effective after weight is reduced, exercises are done regularly, and proper diets observed. For further information on insulin injections, please read the booklet titled Diabetes and Insulin or see your doctor or dietitian. Hyperglycemia is a condition where you have too much sugar in your blood. This is a very serious condition and can bring on abdominal pain, nausea and vomiting. Worse still is the fact that this condition can easily lead to a diabetic coma. If this does occur and the patient is conscious, make sure to drink extra water. Stop any form of exercises and take complete rest. Test urine and blood at least three times a day. Do not miss your daily intake of tablets or insulin injections. Hypoglycemia, on the other hand, is a condition that develops when low blood sugar levels occur in the body of a diabetic. This condition is more likely to occur with people suffering from type 1 diabetes than those suffering from type 2 diabetes. Symptoms of this condition include trembling, sweating, headaches, weakness, palpitation, dizziness, confusion. If not detected early, the patient may lapse into a coma the major causes of this condition include missing meals, excessive exercise, over-medication, and taking excessive amounts of alcohol. When such conditions occur, immediate treatment is necessary. 
This should be in the form of sweetened orange juice or seven jelly beans or two teaspoons of sugar in a half glass of water, four small chocolates or two lollies. Obviously, one should never administer any of these treatment if the patient is unconscious. And for those of you who are on tablets or insulin injections daily, be sure to carry sugary foods with you always. High blood sugar levels over a long period of time can lead to permanent damage to blood vessels and nerves. If people with diabetes damage large blood vessels in the heart, legs or brain, it may cause heart attack, foot ulcer or stroke. And if the small blood vessels are damaged in the eyes, kidneys or nerves, it may result in hazy vision or blindness, kidney disease or pain, itchiness or less feeling in the feet. Diabetic complications can be reduced or prevented by keeping blood sugar levels within normal limits. Other preventative measures include refrain from smoking, exercise regularly, maintain ideal weight, have blood pressure checked and treated, have eyes checked regularly, treat infections promptly, make regular visits to your doctor, health center, or hospital. Diabetes causes blood vessels supplying blood to the feet to thicken, thus less blood reaches the feet. This inevitably causes infections to heal slowly. When there's too much sugar in the blood for a long period of time, the nerves get damaged. When this occurs, the patient is unable to feel pain or heat at the sole of the feet. This is why small sores are not felt or taken care of until they get serious enough to need operation. If you have diabetes, it is very important that you look after your feet always and keep diabetes under proper control. Wash your feet daily and dry thoroughly without rubbing. Massage your feet with coconut oil. Wear cotton socks and make sure you change them daily. Wear well-fitting shoes that are deep enough and broad enough to protect your feet. Do not walk bare feet and cut toenails straight across to be level with the end of toes. Do not cut on the sides of the toenail as this might cause a cut and infection can easily set in. Keeping your diabetes under control will help you stay healthy as well as prevent long-term complications. This can be done by checking the amount of sugar in your blood and urine regularly. This can help you monitor your treatment of the diabetes. It also helps you monitor the effect of diet, exercise and sugar levels. There are a number of ways to test yourself either at home or in hospital. Normal blood sugar levels is 4 millimol to 8 millimol. When you test for blood sugar levels in hospital, ask the doctor for your results. You should know your blood sugar levels are normal or abnormal by yourself. If you want to get your own blood sugar machine and want to test your blood sugars at home, discuss with your doctor or nurse. When there's too much sugar in the blood, it passes through the kidneys and spills into the urine. When your blood sugar levels are normal, you don't usually have sugar in the urine. Regular urine tests are very important to monitor and control your diabetes. Recording your test result is very important. Such records help controlling your diabetes over a period of time. Monitoring your weight is also very important. Weigh yourself at least once a month and try to keep your weight within your ideal weight range according to your height and bone structure. This mysterious killer disease should not be taken lightly. If you have diabetes, you can still lead a healthy and happy life if you learn to control it. And to control diabetes effectively, you need to follow the advice we've given in this documentary or consult your nearest health center or hospital.